Hi everyone and welcome to our overview of module six in our balanced assessment series where we are taking a closer look at acting on evidence of student learning. My name is Misty Higgins and I'm a professional learning coordinator in the Division of Program Standards at the Kentucky Department of Education. And this year we are focusing our work around two essential questions. One, what resources are available to support Kentucky educators as they create and implement a comprehensive balanced system of assessment that's aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And then two, how might schools and districts utilize the formative assessment process to help students meet the expectations within the CAS? As a part of our three year CAS implementation plan, we are currently in year two of that work, taking a closer look at balanced assessment. So answering that question of how will we know if they've learned? How will we know if students have met the grade level expectations within the CAS? To, so to help answer that question, we are taking a deep dive into the formative assessment process. So why focus on formative assessment? We know from the research that when the formative assessment process is implemented intentionally and purposefully at the classroom level, it can greatly impact student achievement. And it is all about noticing, recognizing, and responding to evidence of student learning so that we can help support student progress toward the learning goals. Through the formative assessment process, it helps to foster student self-regulation and ownership as they become more active participants in the learning process. It also provides students with the feedback they need on possible next steps they can take to reach the intended learning outcomes. The formative assessment process also provides teachers with the feedback they need to determine the effectiveness of their instruction, as well as to help them identify students who might be in need of additional time and support to reach the learning goals and how they might extend the learning for those who have met the intended learning outcomes. At the heart of the formative assessment process, it is about empowering students to answer three critical questions around their learning. Where am I going? Where am I now? And where to next? Within the formative assessment process, students and teacher establish answers to the first two questions. Where am I going? And where am I now? But the process doesn't stop with just understanding where students are in their learning. It is about using that information to answer that third critical question of where to next. And as you can see, there's a dashed line that connects acting on evidence to eliciting evidence of student learning. And that reflects the cyclical nature of the formative assessment process. Because once we've taken pedagogical action in response to evidence of student learning, we then have to elicit further evidence to determine if that action was successful in moving student learning forward. We also use that to help inform what comes next in helping students meet the intended learning outcomes. So as a part of our spring professional learning series, we are now releasing module six, the last module in this series. So in March, we are releasing the reading and writing and social studies versions of module six. And then in April, we are releasing the mathematics and science versions of module six. We have three learning goals as a part of module six. We want participants to be able to understand strategies they can uh, use to take pedagogical action that's based on evidence of student learning. We want them to understand the characteristics of effective feedback, as well as how to use the formative assessment process to strengthen their own teaching practice. In terms of the success criteria, as a result of their learning in module six, we want participants to reflect on and improve their use of descriptive feedback that moves students toward the learning goals, and that they can also reflect on their own teaching practice through the use of formative assessment strategies. Each content specific version of module six will consist of two sessions. Session one is the professional learning where we're building their understanding around acting on evidence of student learning. In session two, they apply that learning through a teacher collaboration activity. Each session is designed to take about an hour. So if we take a closer look at what is contained within that professional learning in session one, we can see that it starts with an introduction as well as a quick review of the formative assessment process. Section three takes a closer look at strategies teachers can use as they act on evidence of student learning in the moment. And it's likely that teachers are already using many of these strategies, but section three focuses on building teacher capacity of using these actions strategically and purposefully as they respond to evidence of student learning to move student learning forward. 
Section four examines four characteristics of effective feedback that are designed to empower students as they make decisions about their learning to move toward the intended learning outcomes. Within section five, we know that it is critical for teachers to really reflect on what happened during the learning and why it happened, and then to use that information to inform and improve their practice. So section five takes a closer look at how we can use evidence of student learning to improve three key areas of teacher practice. And then section six, uh, section six is all about tying it all together and participants will complete a three to one reflection to help them synthesize their learning from this session. In session two, the teacher collaboration activity, you can see it starts with just a welcome and then a quick refresher of the formative assessment process, as well as the characteristics of effective feedback. But most of the time within this activity is spent with participants reflecting on and planning to improve their use of descriptive feedback to help students progress toward the learning goals. Each content specific version of this module will include a facilitator's guide, a PowerPoint, content specific examples and ideas to help support student or participant understanding, and then links to additional resources and handouts. One of the additional resources we have with this module is a one pager of what we call taking pedagogical action in the formative assessment process. So this quick reference highlights the specific pedagogical actions that are mentioned within the module and for each action it will quickly just say what it is as well as when they might consider using it. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to either me or Carrie McDaniel, and thank you for taking time to watch this video and to participate in this professional learning series.